Testing your hormones, what do these lab values mean? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. So I talk about hormones every day. I'm a hormone expert. And hormones are hard. So often you know something's wrong with your body and you might go to the doctor and you might ask to get your hormones checked. And very often you may feel blown off or like your doctor's not taking you seriously. And that may not be the case, but understanding that your hormones in general, every hormone in your whole body, it's a system and they connect to each other and they communicate and they are supposed to change based on each other and based on other signals from your body. So very often certain hormones, especially reproductive hormones, have certain values that are normal at a certain time. And when we don't know this and we just get a bunch of them checked or you have a doctor who doesn't know and just checks a bunch of them, it can be very hard to interpret. But more lately than ever, I am seeing patients come to me with a hormone panel and something clearly very abnormally wrong that they were never told about. So I do think it's important to just have a basic understanding of what hormones are at what time period of your cycle and what is normal, what is concerning, and when should you even get them checked? Before we dive in real quick, this channel exists so that you can learn about your fertility. If you wanna help spread this message and learn more, would love it if you would subscribe. That helps just share it with others. We are just so excited that things are growing over here. So, so excited that we care about our hormones, our body, and our fertility. First of all, when you talk about hormones, the main hormones we are talking about is you have the brain is sending out hormones and the ovary, is also making hormones. Really inside the brain, you have the hypothalamus, which communicates to the pituitary gland. I like to think of the pituitary gland as the storage center and the hypothalamus as the control center. So it is controlling what needs to be released from the pituitary gland. Then you have the ovaries, which are making hormones based on what the pituitary gland is telling it to do. And those ovarian hormones are feeding back to the brain or the hypothalamus is interpreting them and conducting what needs to happen next. So in a normal regular cycle, the easiest way to think about this is that I like to imagine the ovary has a vault inside where all your eggs are kept. And at the start of the month, a group of eggs comes out of that vault and each egg grows inside a follicle. This is also when you're on a period. We consider this cycle day one, the day that you're bleeding. So around the same time, you have a group of eggs which are all small in small follicles, ready to grow and nothing's growing. The brain, the pituitary gland then sends out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. That's because the hypothalamus has interpreted that estrogen is low and it is ready to grow an egg. And the brain is going to send out FSH, which is a really well-named hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates a follicle to grow or an egg to grow. And as that egg grows, it makes estrogen, which does many things, grows the lining, makes you feel great and sexy, but it also tells the brain, hey, we're growing an egg, and then your FSH drops. In this time period, one of the standard times where we check labs is cycle day three. So you're bleeding. And when we're doing cycle day three labs, a lot of people call this a baseline lab. What you should have is a relatively low estrogen because you shouldn't already have a follicle growing. Estrogen should be less than 50. Most of the time it's really less than 30. And the FSH from the brain should be about five to 10. And this is milli IUs, but FSH should be five to 10. And that is a normal range. So an FSH of five to 10 in this early follicular phase is then going to stimulate a follicle to grow. And so if you come in, you're on your period, we check labs, I'm looking for normal to be an estrogen less than 50 and an FSH between five to 10. You shouldn't have any progesterone because that's not happening right now. And LH, although you may have it, is really not very crucial at this point of the cycle. So it's often not checked. Occasionally we will check an LH, especially if you're having amenorrhea or we're checking random labs, which I'll get to at the very end. But the most common day three labs are just an FSH and an estrogen. When you start to have less eggs, they are going to start to respond sooner. So the very first sign of having fewer eggs is going to be a normal FSH, but a high estrogen value. So now you are showing me, oh, your estrogen's 65 on cycle day three and your FSH is normal. If you just handed me that on a piece of paper, 
I'm now worried that you have less eggs available. Remember, we're born with all the eggs we have in the vault. As the eggs run out, you have fewer come out every month. So the number of eggs we see outside the vault, the number we have to work with correlates to what's inside. And as that number gets fewer, you have fewer eggs to the same FSH signal, they're gonna start responding faster. It's not as dilute and so they respond faster, estrogen higher. That's a sign of having a lower ovarian reserve. As the ovarian reserve gets even lower, the ovary becomes more stubborn. And if you've gone through fertility stuff, you know this, or you've heard me say this if you're a patient. What this means is it starts to not wanna grow an egg and it's going to take more FSH from the brain to get an egg to grow. So if we look at ovarian aging or running out of eggs in stages, you have normal, FSH five to 10, and an estrogen less than 50. You have starting to have low reserve, normal FSH five to 10, estrogen, now starting to be higher than 50. Then we're going to have a high FSH. Now your FSH is going to be between 10 to 19. And this is really concerning that you're starting to get down into that more critical egg zone. You're still ovulating, but you might see some irregularity to your cycles because the brain's having to work really hard to send out enough FSH to get an egg to grow. And we start to see some ovulatory dysfunction. So if you get day three labs, especially if you have shortened cycles, irregular bleeding, something funky, and your FSH is higher than 10, suddenly we're starting to get worried that you're having low ovarian reserve. Now, the higher that FSH gets, kind of the worse it is is the easiest way to think about it. And when your FSH is over 40, that's a menopausal value. And very often this can come very surprising to some people, doesn't mean you're old. It means your ovaries have gotten to the point where they are no longer releasing eggs. And the more official term is premature ovarian failure or premature ovarian insufficiency. But an FSH value over 40, especially combined with a low estrogen, because let's think about what that means. Your brain is now sending out much, much more FSH than it normally takes. It normally takes five to 10. It's sending out so much FSH, more than 40, and you still don't have any eggs responding and your estrogen is low. That means your ovaries are really not responding anymore. And this FSH value, the higher it gets, kind of the more complete it is. So we see people in this perimenopausal or this ovarian insufficiency, and we kind of like that word more than ovarian failure. Failure makes you think, that's it, no more. Insufficiency often means I can't get your ovaries to respond anymore, but you might randomly ovulate. It's just like so sporadic, but there's so few eggs that your ovaries are too stubborn to respond. And why does that become a thing. Let's imagine you're not having periods or they're very irregular. Your FSH is 80 and your estrogen is 15. You are in premature ovarian insufficiency or failure. And people ask me all the time, well, why can't we do IVF anyway? And you can just give me medications to get the eggs to grow. The medication we give is FSH. That's the medication we give you in an IVF cycle to get eggs to grow. Exact same medication that the brain is making. And so when your brain is already sending out tons of FSH and your ovaries are doing nothing, me giving you FSH shots is not going to get the job done. And that is a very hard reality. So trying to decide or see if there's any warning signs of low ovarian reserve before you get into pure failure is really helpful for your family planning and for you to understand. And this is really where tracking your cycle can be helpful because then you can understand as you progress through these stages, what we tend to see is a shortening of your cycle. So suddenly now you're ovulating sooner. So instead of a 28 day cycle, you're now ovulating on cycle day eight. So everything is getting shifted. Instead of ovulating on cycle day 14, you're ovulating on eight. So now instead of a 28 day cycle, you have a 22 day cycle. Then you're gonna to start to skip ovulations. So you go from closer together to skipping to eventually not having periods at all. So the only clinical warning sign that I often can give somebody is if you are having short cycles that didn't used to be short, that's a warning, especially if you're still trying to grow your family, that you might wanna go see a fertility doctor sooner. Now, when you check labs is very important and understanding the constellation of them because that FSH alone 
we need the estrogen to really help interpret it because some people will have a higher FSH and a higher estrogen, meaning they're kind of in the in-between stage. The egg is responding, but it's taken a whole heck of a lot of FSH to get the job done. LH, luteinizing hormone, the other hormone from the pituitary gland, is the hormone that you're detecting on those ovulation kits. It's the hormone that once your estrogen's high enough to reflect that you have a mature egg, it will be released from the brain in a surge fashion. We'll get that follicle to rupture and the egg to be released. And then that follicle will heal and make the corpus luteum. And that will make progesterone at pulsatile levels because the brain sends out hormones and pulses. So then the corpus luteum responds and pulses throughout that entire luteal phase. And I have a full video on progesterone if you want to dive into the luteal phase. But I'll have somebody get a random hormone panel and then come to me diagnosed with progesterone deficiency. But these labs were just clearly checked in the follicular phase or they'll come in with estrogen dominance and the same thing. It was the follicular phase, it's naturally an estrogen dominant phase. I will have people have labs checked and their FSH and their estrogen are clearly an ovarian failure and nobody told them, or it's approaching it, or they have that in-between zone and nobody interpreted them for them. We don't check hormones though all the time, and that's very important. The number one sign that things are working well is a regular predictable period. So if you have that, that's overall reassuring. Now, checking FSH and estradiol and LH and progesterone, those are the basic hormones. Those start to come into play if you're having irregular cycles or absence of a period, often to try to figure out what is going on and interpreting where you bled with these labs. And my favorite with an ultrasound can really help us understand what's happening. Often, if you're getting a fertility evaluation, we're checking AMH, which is a test of ovarian reserve, telling us how many eggs you have made from the cells that surround all the follicles. It's a better measurement than FSH and estradiol to really try to interpret what category you're in. So if you're ovulating and you're having regular periods, I'm not worried that you're really down here, but I am trying to capture where you might be before there because are you ready to have kids now? Are you wanting one kid or two kid? And that AMH and your family planning goals can all go together. But if you're having irregular periods, if things are off, we're often checking a hormone panel to try to interpret what's going on. A few last points. Progesterone, that's in the luteal phase. You should see progesterone after you ovulate. Any value higher than three nanograms is ovulation. That's it. It's not that 10 is better. It's not that 20 is better. When you're pregnant, it's different, but just in a luteal phase, to have a normal luteal phase, more than three confirms that you ovulate. LH, really, we're checking LH. It can vary so much based on if you're surging or not. But we do tend to see, especially if you have irregular periods, a very high LH to FSH ratio in people with PCOS. And even though that's not in the diagnostic criteria, it's certainly something that a lot of us will sometimes see or check. Those people often have irregular periods, and so they're getting their hormones checked for a different reason. So I even had a consult recently and somebody wanted their hormones checked because they have fatigue, which is an extremely valid complaint. For somebody to get on the schedule with fatigue, I believe you. But when I got a detailed menstrual history and she's telling me her periods are coming very regularly, she's not on any hormones, down to the T, no changes in pattern, I am not worried that this is a ovarian hormone dysfunction. This is not one of your reproductive hormones. That doesn't mean it's not something else, right? And there's a lot of other hormones at play. There's definitely thyroid, which can play a huge role. There's a lot of autoimmune disease, a lot of long COVID. There's many things happening. But if your periods are very regular and predictable, ultimately, we know that brain ovary system's in check. Where the water gets really murky is if you're on birth control pills or you have an IUD because now we can't interpret those hormones. And that's the last thing I see a lot. Somebody goes and gets a hormone panel checked and they're on the pill and they freak out because their estrogen, FSH, LH are all super low and they come to me thinking something's wrong. That's normal. That's how the pill works. The pill works by you intake ethanol estradiol, which does not show up on your normal estrogen blood assay. It, however, the brain interprets it like it does normal estrogen and it stops sending out FSH and LH. So those values are low. So if you draw those labs on the pill and everything's low, that's just telling us the pill's working fine. You can have too low FSH, LH, and estradiol, and that's something called hypothalamic amenorrhea. Those are part of why we're checking those labs, especially if you're having irregular absent periods, because this can be from the brain determining 
the simplest way to put it, you're too stressed to get pregnant. And stress can be physical, emotional, it can be a ton of things, but your body's not ready to get pregnant. And we see this with calorie restriction, extreme exercise, extreme stress, chronic illness, famine, fatigue, all those things. Your body starts to say, hey, you're not ready for this. And your control center down regulates the pituitary, shuts it off, and you don't have FSH and LH. Anorexia is a great example where these will be very low. And even after recovery from your eating disorder, it might take years for this system to feel like things have normalized enough to turn back on. So we'll cover some of that more in another day, but hopefully this helped you understand a little bit about your reproductive hormones, namely FSH, LH, estradiol, progesterone, when we're checking them and what we're really looking for at what time. Ask questions below and we will cover them at another time. Thanks so much, friends. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast, or you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD and subscribe, follow along. Thanks.